Hello, AV Stats folks. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we are moving on to 323 today, um, which is residual plots. Um, so we talked last class about what a residual is. Remember, it's the actual y value minus the predicted y value. Um, and so now we're going to be plotting a residual, making a residual plot, which is basically um, a scatter plot of all of the residuals of a set of data. Okay, so basically a residual plot is just a scatter plot with the explanatory variable or whatever the x variable was already. Have that keep that on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis, instead of the response variable, put the residuals. Um, and basically what a residual plot does is it, it helps us assess how well a regression line fits the data. Um, so you, I'll show you a little bit more what that means later, but um, basically what it will turn into is you have your explanatory variable on the x-axis, you have your residuals on the y, and uh, zero, um, being the x-axis basically um, and you'll have you know some scattered stuff happening um, and that's kind of a ish what the residual plot would, would look like okay so let's actually make a residual plot um, so I have given you a set of data um, so please first so this is um, a relationship between the number of TVs per capita uh, in certain countries and life expectancy. Um, so we're just going to kind of take a look at how these two variables are related. Um, TVs and life expectancy, would you think that they're related? That like, you know, having more TVs cause people to live more? Well, not necessarily, but um, you might have a correlation there uh, that if you have countries with a lot of TVs, um, they probably have higher income, um, and, uh, and therefore, you know, might have better health care as well, um, and therefore a higher life expectancy. So it, we kind of imagine that these are going to be positively correlated, um, but uh, let's take a look. So go ahead, put this data into your uh, calculator. So list one, list two, and if you'd like to try in list three, uh, calculate your residuals. Uh, so pause it, try it, and then I'll show you how to how to make that. Okay, so here I've entered my data. Um, so conceptually, to make a residual plot, I need to make a list of the residuals of all the y values. So L1 is my x, L2 is my y, so I need to find my residuals. Now remember, your residual is your actual y value minus your predicted y value. And in order to get the predicted y value, we need the line of, or at least squares regression line. So um, go to, you know, the place where you get your regression line, uh, stat, calc, um, and then lin reg for um, ax plus b. We want to do that on L1 and L2. And get your regression line. And calculate. And hey, okay, there's my regression line. Okay, so I just wrote it down here so that we have our... Um, have it for reference, but your residual is your actual minus predicted, y minus y hat, uh, where y hat is 39.67x plus 53.99. Okay, so now I can go back to my stat calc, or sorry, stat edit, okay, and then in list three, I need to make um, my y hats. So I'm going to go up, highlight L3, hit enter, and what I need to do is do 39.67 times x, so I'm going to type in 39. 0.67 times x and x whatever the x value is was list one so I'm going to do um, second one and then I'm adding 53.99 to that hit enter okay so those are all your predicted y values these are your actual y values in L2 so we need to do actual minus predicted so then in list four I'm going to highlight list four I need to do actual minus predicted, so L2 minus L3. Hit enter. And then I have a list of all my residuals for each of those x values that I found. Um, and so in order to graph the residual plot, I'm just going to go to second stat plot and then graph it the same way you would any other scatter plot. So second 
um, select your scatter plot. I want to do my X list is still my X list, so L1, but my Y list is L4 because that's the residuals. And oops, zoom nine. And then here is the residual plot. Okay, so not too bad. Um, it's not horrific. Uh, there is an easier way to do it, um, slightly easier, but I didn't want to show that to you until you suffered through the actual um, remembering what a residual is. So um, the other way to do it is go back to your stat edit, um, go back to your lists. Okay, and instead of actually calculating the residuals, I, I'm going to clear out um, L3 and L4, which were the things that helped me calculate my residuals. Um, and the only way this works is if you already have um, done some sort of um, stat calc, uh, a, a linear regression analysis between L1 and L2. Um, otherwise, your calculator won't know um, what you're trying to do or what your what what residuals you're trying to get. So you have to do that first. So you have to do this linreg first. Then you can go back into your stat uh, edit and then highlight L3. Okay, hit enter so that you're editing the entire list. Um, and then go second stat and go down to resid. Okay, eight. Hit enter. Okay, so now L3 is going to populate with the residuals. Hit enter, and voila! I have my residuals. Mm, 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 mm. And then you can do scatter plot L1 versus L3. Okay, so kind of nifty. Good stuff. Okay, so why do we care? Why do we care about a residual plot? Well, there are a couple of things that it's really helpful for. Um, namely, it's really just to see um, how well the line of best fit fits the data. Because um, you know how we talked about whether or not uh, a data set is, like the form of it is either linear or nonlinear. This is a good way to determine whether something's linear or not. Um, and so uh, here's our scatter plot or our residual plot for the entire thing um, for our previous set of data. So why a residual plot? A couple of things. One, okay, it basically it takes the line of best fit and the least squares regression line. Um, wherever it was, this way, this way, whatever, okay, um, and then it, it makes it horizontal, basically, and keeps all of the dots um, the same relative distance to the line, um, it, but now close to the x-axis, um, and what that does is it allows us to see if there's, like, a pattern or um, anything, like, out of the ordinary um, to kind of see how well the line is fitting the data. And if you don't see a pattern in the residual plot, basically what that means is that the line captured the overall pattern of the data well, um, and therefore a line is a pretty appropriate model for the data. Um, if you see a pattern, then there's probably something else that was a better fit, not a line. Okay, so when you're looking at a residual plot, there are two main things you wanna focus on or look for. Um, the first is, uh, you want to look for little to no pattern in the residual plot and also that like the residuals are like a relatively small distance from the line of best fit, right? You don't want like enormous residuals because that means something else is going on um, and that the line of best fit really isn't a good model for your data. Okay, so for example, say you graph um, two variables. And the scatter plot looks something like this. You might make a line of best fit like this. Whoop. Okay, that's pretty good. Fits the data pretty well. Looks like a line. But then when you actually graph the residual plot, it looks something like this. Uh, or something like that, right? In which case, there does seem to be some sort of a pattern. Like if you take a look, there's like some sort of like parabolic thing happening. So it could have been that you took a line and you tried to fit data that was actually quadratic or something instead, um, or maybe exponential. 
um, and you just tried to force a line on it. So perhaps maybe it would have been better to fit the data with a quadratic instead of a line. Okay, that's kind of the general idea. So if your line of, uh, if your residual plot comes out pretty well scattered and there's not really a pattern or anything, um, then a line was a pretty good fit for the data. Okay, moving on, standard deviation of the residuals. So typically, if we do standard, this is just notation, typically if we do standard deviation um, of like a variable x, we notate it like that. Um, often, um, when we're talking about the uh, standard deviation of the residuals, you'll only see an s, not s of x, um, and that is referring to the standard deviation of the residuals. Um, there's a formula for it, I will include that, um, but you're not required to like memorize it or actually even plug stuff in, but you should know how it's calculated. Okay, so your standard deviation of the residuals is just the sum of the residuals squared. Okay, so you take a residual, you square it, then you add it to the next residual, square it, add it to the next residual, square it, then divide by n minus two, so however many values, data values you have, minus two, square root it, okay? Um, and basically what this tells you in context is that um, it just generally gives you the typical or average error um, that the line, at least squares regression line um, predicts. And if you're curious as to why it's n minus two instead of like n or n minus one, um, it basically just means, the reason that they put that in there is because, um, this is long story short, uh, with a line, a least squares regression line, if you have two data points and that's it, um, there's no way to actually tell the variability of uh, the data because you have no information. So you need at least three points um, to determine that. So um, what that does is it basically makes it impossible for you to calculate um, the typical error um, unless you have three data points or more. Okay, last thing is the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. Recall that r, which is the correlation coefficient, gives you strength and direction um, of a, a set of data, um, the correlation between the two sets, the two sets of data, the two variables. Um, the coefficient of determination is just that number r, but squared. And it actually gives you a little more information than um, the, well, just different information. Okay, so this is how r squared is calculated. It's just 1 minus the sum of the squared errors over the sum of the squares, which is uh, 1 minus the sum of the residual squared uh, divided by um, each individual y value minus the mean squared. Um, and again, you don't need to be able to calculate this, but um, you do need, do need to understand that like, if every single point lies on the line, the sum of the residual squared is going to be zero because every point lies on the line, which means the residual is zero, which means r squared would be one, uh, which means it's a perfect fit. Um, and basically this means the r squared value is the percent of variation in the response variable that can be explained by the linear relationship with x. And so if all the points are on the line, then 100% of the variation in the response variable can be explained by the linear relationship with x. Now, if r squared is like 80%, then only 80% of that variation can be explained by the linear relationship with x. Um, 20, uh, the other 20% um, is explained by something else um, that you're unaware of. Okay, so this is kind of our last example. Um, let me know if you have questions in class because I know residual r squared coefficient of determination is kind of confusing, but go ahead, try this example, but in, find and interpret, so remember it has to have context, um, what r, the LSRL, and r squared, and the residual plot, and the standard deviation of the residuals um, for the data entered earlier, um, like TV and uh, life expectancy. Um, but keep in mind that if you use the calculator to find the standard deviation of the residuals, your answer will be a little off because your calculator divided by n minus one, not n minus two. Here are your answers. Make sure you understand um, the interpretation in context. Uh, and if you need help with that uh, standard deviation, here's your one bar stats, which you get with stat calc, and then one bar stats, my residuals are in list three. 
Um, and so my s of x is this 7.16, and then I use the sum of the squares divided by 9, square rooted it. 